The UK Home Secretary James Cleverley is in Rwanda where he'll sign a new asylum treaty with the country. He's been visiting the Genocide Museum in the capital Kigali. The government hopes that the treaty will restart plans to send some asylum seekers there and have their claims processed. That's after the Supreme Court ruled against the policy. The UK government is putting more measures in place that could include allowing Parliament to vote and confirm that Rwanda is a safe destination for asylum seekers who've come to the UK. On Monday, Mr Cleverly outlined plans to reduce legal migration, which included increasing the salary which skilled workers would need before they could get a visa by almost half. Our political editor Chris Mason is travelling with the Home Secretary and sent this report from Kigali. The Home Secretary arrived here in Kigali, the Rwandan capital, in the last couple of hours. He is the third Home Secretary uh, to visit Rwanda in around about 18 months. Priti Patel came out here in April of last year. Uh, Suella Braverman was out here in the spring of this year. Now comes James Cleverly. So three Home Secretaries, but no migrants yet uh, arriving here. Uh, why? Well, there was a rejection in the Supreme Court of the latest iteration of the government's plan last month. And so the hoped for solution from Minister's perspective uh, is a treaty, an international agreement between Rwanda and the UK. That will be signed in the next couple of hours. And central to that treaty is addressing the principal concern set out by the Supreme Court. And this is a concern that any migrants that were sent here could end up being sent back to their home country or to another country. And the aim of this treaty and the new laws that will accompany it, both here in Rwanda and in the UK, uh, aims to ensure that that isn't possible. So that is the centrepiece. There'll be other details that we'll get uh, in the coming hours. The government still hopes and says that it wants to get migrants on planes to Rwanda by the spring. Quite a few people are pretty sceptical about that kind of time scale but obviously there is an election looming and being seen to address the issue of small boats with this flagship policy of Rwanda that has failed so far is seen as absolutely central to that. Chris Mason there in Kigali while well, also in the Rwandan capital is our correspondent Miley Jones and she gave us an update on the latest on the Home Secretary's itinerary. Well, it's a very packed day for the Home Secretary. He'll only be spending a few hours here in Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, and his agenda includes visiting the British High Commission. He'll also be taking a tour of the Rwandan Genocide Memorial, uh, that is the memorial that was erected to commemorate the 1994 uh, genocide here in Rwanda that saw uh, many members of the Tutsi eth ethnic clan uh, killed. After that, uh, he'll have a break, they'll have a short bilateral meeting and then the treaty will be signed and there will be a press conferences uh, as we flew in we could see many international visitors coming here and that is very much the image that Rwanda wants to present to the world that it is uh, a modern country one of Africa's uh, fastest developing economies uh, but its critics and members of the opposition says the country is not yet in a position uh, to accept asylum seekers it's still a developing nation it should be taking care of its own and there have also been concerns raised by by, uh, human rights groups uh, as to whether uh, asylum seekers sent here would be treated fairly, would be given a fair shot or would be sent back to countries that would potentially be dangerous. These are all uh, criti criticisms that the Rwandan government has dismissed. It says that this country is perfectly safe, but it has a, a big job to do to try and convince the rest of the world uh, that this is indeed the case, particularly after last month's Supreme Court ruling. A short while ago, I spoke to the former Attorney General Dominic Grieve, who explained how the government might try to work past the Supreme Court ruling that their plan was unlawful with the treaty in Rwanda. It's important to understand that the Supreme Court's judgment was based on its factual analysis. It endorsed the factual analysis of the Court of Appeal that Rwanda was not a safe country to which to send asylum seekers, not because it considered the government of Rwanda was deliberately trying to breach the asylum seekers' rights, but that there was evidence that its officials, it was not able to control what went on, and that there were instances in which asylum seekers had been mistreated, including being sent back to their countries of origin, where they might suffer uh, a, a punishments or hurt uh, of a kind that breached uh, the Refugee Convention and our own domestic English law. That was the finding. So it's perfectly open to the government to go and do a treaty with Rwanda. 
and to try to ensure by that treaty that it could satisfy our own courts, that in fact it meets the standards laid down by our own domestic laws and by the Refugee Convention and indeed the Human Rights Act. Although the Supreme Court made the point that the Human Rights Act was actually rather secondary to the international conventions and the domestic law that covers it in, this, in our country. Now, the problem really is not about going to sign the treaty, it's what the government decides to do next. Because the government has announced that not only is it going to sign the treaty, but then having signed the treaty, it's going to go to Parliament and pass a statute which says, well, now we've signed the treaty, Rwanda can be deemed to be a safe country and effectively to bypass our own national courts and prevent them from considering the matter any further. And that is constitutionally a very unusual thing to do. And I think a number of people have characterised it as grossly improper. Uh, and I think it's likely to lead to serious problems for the government because it's probable that they wouldn't be able to get that legislation through Parliament immediately because it might well be blocked in the House of Lords. So it's difficult to understand the government's strategy. And it's also apparent that there appear to be some officials in the Home Office who are very doubtful that even with this treaty, uh, the standard necessary to allow for asylum seekers to be sent to Rwanda will be met. And so those are the challenges facing the government. So clearly, doing the treaty is a step from the government's point of view in the right direction, but it by no means resolves its problems. The former Attorney General Dominic Grieve. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News.